Welcome to another Biomedical Engineers TV video. In this video, we will look into electromyogram or electromyography, also known as EMG machines. I would like to request our viewers to maybe support us on Patreon or through PayPal to produce more accurate content on this channel. Let's start the video. So where did this all begin? In 1771, Luigi Galvani, an Italian physician, discovered that stimulation of the muscular tissue produced contraction and force. However, this finding was not measured until 1922 when Herbert Gasser and Joseph Erlanger began attempting to record nerve impulses and thus improve the cathode ray oscilloscope. Years later in 1942, the first modern EMG machine was created by Herbert Jasper at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. What is electromyography? Electromyography, or EMG, is a diagnostic procedure to assess the health of muscles and the nerve cells that control them, motor neurons. EMG results can reveal nerve dysfunction, muscle dysfunction, or problems with nerve-to-muscle signal transmission. Motor neurons transmit electrical signals that cause muscles to contract, and EMG uses tiny devices called electrodes to translate these signals into graphs sounds, or numerical values that are then interpreted by a specialist. During a needle EMG, a needle electrode inserted directly into a muscle records the electrical activity in that muscle. A nerve conduction study, another part of an EMG, uses electrode stickers applied to the skin, surface electrodes, to measure the speed and strength of signals traveling between two or more points. So what is nerve conduction study? NCS is a measurement of the amount of speed of conduction of an electrical impulse through a nerve. NCS can determine nerve damage and destruction and is often performed at the same time as EMG. Both procedures help to detect the presence, location, and extent of diseases that damage the nerves and muscles. Let's learn about the components of an EMG machine. The major component of the EMG machines are computer, amplifier, junction box, which is also known as the preamplifier, pattern generator display, external stimulator, goggles, headphones, and different types of electrodes. Let's understand each component function individually. First, the computer. The computer is connected with the amplifier box, which is controlled by a software and receives information from the patient, which is later processed and presented in a graphical representation on a display. Second is the amplifier. The amplifier controls the output of the junction box or preamplifier. The amplifier controls the frequency as well as the output current for the stimulator. Junction box or preamplifier. The preamplifier is the device where all the electrodes are to be placed which need to be connected to the patient to get the signal delivered by the stimulator. Pattern generator display. A patient response unit may be used to record the number of times the test subject acknowledges different types of stimuli and cognitive function assessments. Video cameras may be integrated into the system to observe the patient's behavior during a study. Example, focusing on the checkerboard pattern in a visual evoked potential investigation. External stimulator. The measurement of the surface EMG during electrical stimulation requires the suppression of the stimulus pulse close to the source. This is necessary because of the discharge currents spreading within the human body caused by the stimulation pulse and the drift effects at the electrodes distorting the EMG signal. For these types of studies, an external stimulator is used. Goggles in EMG machines. A visual evoked potential is an evoked potential caused by a visual stimulus, such as an alternating checkerboard pattern on a computer screen. Responses are recorded from electrodes that are placed on the back of your head and are observed as a reading on an NCS test in EMG machines. Headphones in EMG machines. A Rene test evaluates hearing loss by comparing air conduction to bone conduction. Air conduction hearing occurs in the air near the ear and it involves the ear canal and eardrum. Bone conduction hearing occurs through vibrations picked up by the ear's specialized nervous system by electrodes. Types of EMG machines. There are two kinds of EMG, surface EMG and intramuscular EMG. Surface EMG assesses muscle function by recording muscle activity from the surface above the muscle of the skin. Surface EMG can be recorded by a pair of electrodes or by a more complex array of multiple electrodes. 
What is surface EMG? To examine to what extent the application of surface electromyography in the field of exercise and, more in general, of human movement is adopted by professionals on a regular basis. For this purpose, a brief history of the recent developments of modern techniques will be assessed and evaluated for a potential use in exercise physiology and clinical biomechanics. Let's look into intramuscular EMG. Intramuscular electromyography signals are detected with needles or wires inserted into muscles. With respect to non-invasive techniques, intramuscular electromyography has high selectivity for individual motor unit action potentials and is thus used to measure motor unit activity. Decomposition of intramuscular signals into individual motor unit action potentials consists in detection and classification, usually followed by separation of superimposed action potentials. This was a type of EMG machines with two different applications, but as hardware-wise, you get a portable EMG machine and a standalone unit with a multiple electrode and stimulation option. This was the simplified video on EMG machines. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching Biomedical Engineers TV. I'll catch you guys in the next video.